so you look like a horrible person if they count on that. You know, right. On. I just wonder how many people know how much affordable housing really exists in Tinley Park. Because there there's a lot of it. Yes. care about the local residents voice of Tinley Park or their own legacy code yeah <laughs> Part of the problem, right? That yeah. they keep they're keeping things from you. Keeping things, yes. hiding things, and not doing it in our best interest. Like, right. Well, what do you, the result of this pro protest and the whole process that this project, you know, came to be, comes to light, and we can see what actually happened. Right. And why we were not, well, we were not kept apprised of the situation. Does it bother you? Um, I, one of the main points of contention, at least that I see, is that. This space was supposed to be commercial required on the bottom level. We need yes. desperately. Okay, and why, why, tell me more about that. Why do you need that desperately? Because our taxes are out of sight. And yes. look at Frankfurt <coughs> and Orland. I mean, every three hours a new business opens up. Why is it that there's nothing coming in here? Right. Somebody doesn't know what they're doing or intentionally doesn't want it, one of the two. If, let's say, this project was coming here and they did have the first floor all commercial businesses like restaurants and shops, would this be happening? Uh, probably not to this degree, but it'd still be a big issue because people already can't get in and out of their streets at first. Because of the traffic. Oh, that's another traffic. thing. The, the traffic, traffic, the concert yeah. traffic. It's a really bad spot it's for an apartment area. complex, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, well, it's not even just the, 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 con the concert traffic. Yeah. Traffic on Old Park yeah. Avenue yeah. in itself yeah. is a problem. I, you know, live up here and it's impossible sometimes to get out onto Oak Park Avenue. So they, they didn't, I don't think they did their due diligence to find if this was an appropriate place for a, a lot of activity. Yeah, but just even looking at the traffic on a Saturday here, this is a very busy intersection. It's not a, it's not a, a slow going. Oh, the concert. Yeah. yeah. Forget it. People Forget it. Even get past so it does call into question who, why the village planners don't seem to take any of this into consideration. They didn't do a traffic study. No, no. not at all. Oh, I heard they get Amy sit in a parking lot and count cars. The biggest thing is, if, you know, if you live in Tinley, this should be a problem for you anywhere in Tinley, anywhere in Orland, you know, anywhere in the surrounding areas because our village board can do things like this without talking to anybody, without the public knowing. It's just not not acceptable. I don't see anybody here talking about race. I see the hecklers talking about race. I'm talking about the schools that my kids go to and the fact that there is no study done on what that's going to do to the schools. Overcrowding. Right. I, my, I asked my 11-year-old daughter who said that at Central Middle School there wouldn't be room for 10 more students, let alone 20, 30, 40. And I asked why, and she said because there's not enough blockers. The meetings that one of the teachers who stood up and said, "I've got 32 kids in my class." So, right. where where do we put uh, uh, all these other children? That's the question. There is no study done. Nobody knows. And it appeared that the school board didn't know about it either. Which is surprising, since Amy Conley is sitting on the school board. Right. Which that's one of my next conversations is for her not to be on my school board. Right. Because of the fact that she's on paid administrative leave from the village. Right. It, it just it doesn't work for me. I want people that I trust running my school board where my kids go to school. The problem is that we've 
We've never come out of the recession in Tidmouth. The house directly behind mine is still in foreclosure. It's been empty for a year. And it's, at this point, it's at $150,000. That's what I paid for my house in 1999. How can we not have affordable housing in Tidmouth when we have things like that going on? This isn't the right place or the right time for this building. We can't afford to support this type of a building. Plus, didn't we learn that it's not a good idea to put, put low income people into one place? It's better to sprinkle them around the neighborhood. We've got affordable housing throughout our neighborhoods. Putting them all in one building is going to make them. Everybody will know who lives here. Somebody. That's not fair to them. One of the. One of the. I agree with you there. One of the people at the one of the meetings had stood up and said, "Who are these families that need the affordable housing? And why haven't hasn't my church been made aware?" Because if we had been made aware, we would be doing everything we could to find them affordable housing. I believe right. that that's true. That's I believe that oh, I've yeah. seen with people at Tinley Park that you're genuinely concerned about helping people who need the help. After listening to Charlie Smith speak at the first meeting, I have no doubt in my mind that Tinley Park has broad shoulders, a big heart. We'll find homes for people if needed. We don't need to have somebody from Ohio come and build and tell us how to take care of people. Thank you very much, Chris.